Hi. Hi there, Jennifer. How thanks so much for taking the time. I'm Elizabeth. Elizabeth, it's nice to meet you. Thank you so much. Yeah. So um, I know we're tight on time, so I will just cut right to the, the chase with our questions. But this is for our um, half hour special for Women's History Month. And so I think the first thing that I just wanted to talk about is that you were fighting for equal rights for women uh, as a documentary filmmaker and as an activist before before you were ever uh, in the role of first partner. How has being in the role of first partner now shaped your perspective on that fight? Um, and has your position allowed you to uh, change the way that you are, are fighting for equality for women? Mm, great question. Thank you. So, you know, as you shared, my work prior really with the representation project and as a documentary filmmaker, and then prior to that working for Conservation International, working with indigenous communities, helping them to create micro enterprises in Africa and Latin America, my work has always been centered on women and centering women, telling their stories, uplifting them, creating economic access and opportunities for them. And so I think what's been so great about the first partner role is that I've gotten to see firsthand how cultural change and legislation and the marketplace all work together to either hinder or obstruct progress or enable progress. And so that's one of the things that I've so enjoyed in this office, especially through our Equal Pay California pledge and also our women on boards work is that we've been able to uh, really like lean into kind of awakening folks consciousness, shifting attitudes and behaviors, which is the cultural change campaign work, while also complementing legislation and then moving corporations uh, best practices by basically demonstrating all of the wins and what's possible when you have women with seats at the tables of power and when women are paid equitably. Talk a little bit more about um, your work with the Equal Pay uh, California uh, effort and, and just, you know, I guess where you, uh, you see things needing to go from here. You've obviously put a lot of work in, but where do we need to go moving forward? And also what role do men have to play in this, um, in this effort? because it's, it's, it's gotta be a, jo a joint effort. Yes, so in 2020, California women lost $87 billion to the pay gap. In the state of California, women on average are making 86 cents this past year to the man's $1 earned. Unfortunately for black women, they're making 59 cents, Native American women, 57 cents, and Latina women, 55 cents. And yet, when we actually look at national numbers and analyze women working full time plus women working part time and seasonally, we see that the pay gap is is even um, on average worse. It's it's not as bad as it is for women of color, but on average, it drops from the national average of eighty three cents to actually seventy three cents that women in America earn for every dollar that men earn. And why this is so troubling is then you add the layer of women raising children and there's actually a motherhood penalty where women lose 30% of their wages to the fatherhood bonus. Um, so this is, this is um, troubling because when you have pay inequity, you're never gonna achieve, achieve racial equity or gender equity. And that's what we're seeing in California. So, one of my first initiatives was launching Equal Pay CA, which basically was to get the private sector on board and committed to three things. Um, signing our Equal Pay Pledge meant that they would, number one, have to conduct an annual pay gap analysis. Number two, uh, review their hiring and promotion practices to weed out unconscious bias and, and structural barriers to pay equity. And then three, to promote best practices. And what's so great is that so many companies have signed on and those companies actually, for the most part, have achieved pay parity. Not all of them, but a good number of them have achieved pay parity and as a result are seeing reduced uh, turnover and greater workforce commitment. And then most recently, California, the state, the largest employer actually in the state with 246,000 employees committed to and actually signed the Equal Pay Pledge 
which is so wonderful because we're really trying to walk the walk and demonstrate uh, that we value women. And part of that, again, is we've already been conducting these annual uh, pay gap analysis, and that, that information has been available. And we're actually seeing at the state level that pay inequity is decreasing between women and men. Um, we simultaneously are, are reviewing hiring and promotion practices and then attempting to, to uplift best practices and really walk the walk. And this um, uh, announcement that the governor is going to appoint an equal or um, a chief equity officer, that person will oversee this at the state level. So that's really exciting. So look, we have work to do. We have tremendous work to do because again, we live in a capitalist society where wealth begets wealth and wealth is not in the pockets of women, so to speak, especially, and it's definitely not in the pockets of mothers and it's not in the pockets of women of color. Yeah, I know um, you have two daughters, I believe, and I have a daughter, Yeah, she's five and a half. Uh, is this okay. a fight that they are going to be still fighting when they hit the workplace? What What do you foresee for them? Not on my watch. Not on workplace. my watch. <laughs> as long as as we're in this position, um, I will continue uh, to advocate for closing the pay gap. Look, California has the strongest equal pay laws in the nation, and we're trying to whittle that pay gap down to the smallest pay gap in the nation. Uh, we'd like there to be no pay gap. And definitely for my daughters and my sons, um, it's critical that they see that women are equal. And one of the ways that we've so demonstrated how much we devalue women and unfortunately devalue so many of the professions that women have historically worked in is by underpaying them or asking them to work for free. So, you know, we're trying to right these injustices that have been decades, centuries in the making. And I think we've got a good start on this here in California, but we have a lot of work left to do. Is that a conversation that you are having with your sons about the importance of viewing women as equals? Is it something where you, you show them the importance of that? Is it a discussion that you have with them? Yes, thank you. I, I appreciate that. So um, 100%, we talk about everything in our household and equity is top of the conversation, um, all forms of equity. And I'm really proud. I think, you know, we're doing our best. Uh, parenting is a big job. But there's a lot of responsibility in, in raising kind, decent, uh, future um, engaged uh, civilians and citizens. And I, I'm really proud of the work we're doing and, and love um, raising boys who are caring and raising girls who um, are, see themselves as leaders. And just as I, you know, I'm raising human beings across the board who ultimately are caring and hopefully lean into some form of leadership. Talk about the struggle to find balance between all of that. You we, and so many women look to you as an example of it, what, you know, we aspire to be leaders. We aspire to make a difference in our communities. Mm. We also want to be attentive and nurturing parents at the same time. Talk about the struggle to find balance in that. And what advice do you have for women who do want to be out there, be a part of things, be active, but also be good parents? Look, it's a great question. And I think we're all um, trying to find balance in one form or fashion. And, you know, there are different chapters of our lives. I certainly don't have it right. I am constantly uh, assessing and reassessing and troubleshooting. Uh, I really look to my children and what their um, communicating, whether uh, directly or indirectly, um, in terms of how well I'm supporting them and, and my, my job as a parent. Um, you know, if, I'm, if, I, if, if they're okay, then I feel okay. And when they're struggling, it's really hard. And with four of them, and they're all going in different directions. And, um, you know, it is super hard. Uh, but I think, look, I have a documentary actually coming out on Saturday that is about all the invisible labor that women have shouldered. Um, given the fact that 84% of Black women, Black mothers are breadwinners or co-breadwinners, 
uh, 67% of Native American mothers, 62% of white mothers, and 60% of Latina mothers. Given those high numbers of women as breadwinners, we know that there's too much on our shoulders and too much on our plates. And it's something that I talk to my husband about a lot because it's important that people in leadership understand uh, the trials and travails and challenges uh, that working mothers in particular face, but also uh, with the um, trust and, and, and understanding that those leaders, not just my husband, I mean, it's one of the reasons he surrounded himself, frankly, with quite a few female leaders in the administration, but part of that is just having leaders who are empathetic and who understand and who themselves have experienced um, the trials and tribulations of raising young children and finding some form of balance, which is never really 50-50. Um, and so again, it's for me, it's just about communication. It's about dialogue. I just made a documentary again, as I mentioned, that's going to come out in the summer of a bit that we're premiering at a film festival this weekend that really is trying to give couples tools because um, gender equity uh, really does require uh, men to step into care at home or partners to step into care at home, just as it requires leaders at, in the workforce to recognize how essential it is to our economy to have women sitting at the tables of power, influencing decisions from their perspective, um, with their wisdom and their orientation, having been historically the, the predominant caregivers in our society. Yeah. And I think the pandemic has hopefully shed a little bit more light on the work <laughs> of caregivers, uh, particularly. But before we we wrap up, I do want to ask one more thing about the Women Inspire exhibit because I know mm. you worked hard on that. Um, tell me about um, tell me about the exhibit and, and your work involved in with it. Oh, thanks so much. So we revamped and relaunched the Women Inspire exhibit in 2020. And because doors were shuttered and open and closed for, you know, on and off during the pandemic, now that we're in this endemic period, I'm so excited for um, folks of all walks of life, but especially Californians to visit the California Museum. Um, this exhibit in particular is important for me because it really centers women. It writes and acknowledges uh, women's history in California and the role that women played in making our state the state that it is today. And it really lauds, you know, women throughout the different uh, generations who um, have been bold and uh, brave and have really, you know, fought for equity and justice and opportunity across the board. And so I'm excited for, you know, fourth graders to hopefully visit when they come and visit uh, the Capitol and for families to make time to visit the museum. It's a wonderful museum. It's a real treasure. And I'm so grateful to have been a part of uh, launching and, um, you know, giving birth to this new exhibit. Yes, I'm excited to take my daughter. I do want to ask, is the Achieve Equality um, position that you had mentioned earlier, the chief equity uh, officer position. Yes, yes. Is that, um, is that, has that been announced? Is that something brand new that we're just learning about now? Yes. Yeah, so it, it is a new position. We have not announced if you have any great candidates, send them our way or if you yourself are a great candidate. <laughs> um, but we are looking, uh, for some great candidates for this role and, um, it's very, a very important role and we're really proud of it. Um, diversity, equity, um, and inclusion are essential. California is, it wants to continue to lean in and um, really achieve our equity and inclusion goals and inspire the rest of the nation to follow suit given. And this will be holding people accountable to do that. It and this like. will be holding folks accountable and inspiring a more equitable uh, and egalitarian world. Wonderful. Well, we um, are there any other new initiatives moving forward? I know you said your documentary premiering uh, this weekend. Anything else on the horizon that we want to uh, be sure to keep track of? Oh, thanks. Well, there's so much going on right now. Because <laughs> I know. Really, you have a lot going on. Yeah. You know, it's centered on gender equity and child well-being. So let's talk again, because I can't wait to share all the stuff that we're working on that, that again, is, you know, this is my heart work. Um, I one of five girls, I was uh, raised sort of in that spirit of sisterhood um, and feel like I've been given this 
wonderful gift and opportunity to be in the role of first partner uh, to really partner with women across the state and uh, ensure that California models for the rest of the country what's possible when we have gender equity and when we raise future generations to have the best start in life. All right, Jennifer Siebel Newsom, thank you so much for your time. It's just been such a pleasure. Thank you so much. So great to speak with you. All right, take care. Bye.